The operations presented in this video are meant to be instructional to ensure quality construction. This video is not intended to provide a comprehensive overview of safety procedures. All parties should ensure that they are familiar with and follow all safety requirements, policies, and procedures that apply to their specific operation. In this video, we are going to discuss the pile driving process for structural foundations. Pile driving is the operation of placing a slender column into the earth by means of hammering or vibration to achieve a required resistance for the support of structural elements. Piles are used to support vertical and horizontal loading and come in many different kinds. There are two main types of hammers used to install piles, the drop hammer and the vibratory. Just like the name states, the drop hammer projects a weight into the air and lets it drop onto the pile, creating the force needed to push the pile into the ground. This is typically powered by diesel fuel. Vibratory hammers, on the other hand, use hydraulic fluid or another medium and shake the pile into the ground. For this training video, we will focus on the most commonly used piling operation, the placement of H-piles using a diesel hammer. Pile driving inspection can be broken into four areas. We will look at the pre-driving review, which will include the required paperwork to have on site before the actual pile driving can begin, and the different publications and contract documents to review. The pre-driving verification, which will include what to inspect and ensure you have in the field before the pile driving operation can begin. The actual pile driving operation, which will include test pile and bearing pile installations, re-striking, and splicing, and lastly will be measurement and payment. First, we will look at the pre-driving review, which will include the required paperwork needed before pile driving can take place, and the different publications and contract documents to review. The first piece of paperwork is the foundation approval letter. This letter can be found in ECMS by going to the Solicit tab and selecting the Project Development Checklist. In the Project Development Checklist, under the categories Structures and Geotechnical, you will find the Foundation Approval Attachment. It is best to print a copy and review it. The Foundation Approval Letter includes information such as soil data obtained from the core borings, pile information used for design, estimated pile tip elevations, any required minimum pile tip elevations, pre-drilling requirements, pile dynamic monitoring, and comments. Another piece of paperwork is the hammer approval letter, which contains all of the details regarding the specific hammer to be used. The contractor needs to submit a CS5 pile hammer data form through PPCC 21 days before the pile operation is to begin. This is to allow time for central office to review the form and provide the hammer approval letter. You should also obtain a copy of the CS1005 pile driving log. This is used to document the blows to each pile and distance the pile moves during driving. This form can be obtained on PennDOT's website under the forms, pubs, and maps link. You will want to print a copy of the CS1005. The header of the form is the same for all piles and can be filled out in advance of the operation. To help fill out the pile driving log, go to Publication 2, Project Office Manual, Part C, Section 10, Page 14. This publication includes a detailed description of the pile driving log and how to complete. Another publication to review is the pile driving specification in Publication 408, Section 1005, Piles. This includes a description of the work, key pile term definitions, materials for use, construction specifications, and payment information for the work. More information about pile driving can be found in Publication 8, Construction Manual, Section 1000, Part 3. Information in Publication 8 includes tips for inspectors' documentation of the work and a checklist of key elements for piling operations. Be sure to review the general notes on the structure drawings and any contract special provisions to see if there are any special circumstances that may apply to the pile driving operation specific to the project, like dynamic pile load monitoring or pre- and post-construction surveys. Now that we have finished discussing publications, forms, and letters, 
We are ready for some pre-driving verification activities that should be performed as equipment and materials begin to come onto the project. Remember to make sure all subcontractors related to the pile driving operation are approved in ECMS before they start work on the project. When the piles and tips arrive, inspect the piles for any damage from shipping and handling. Pay special attention to the welding around the pile tips, consulting any welding details. If anything looks suspect, take pictures and contact your structure control engineer for further review. While inspecting the piles for damage, also make sure that the piles are the correct size as stated in the plans, foundation approval, and hammer approval letter. The size of the pile is usually marked on the pile by the use of a stamp or a sticker. For an H pile, the first number is approximately the flange width and depth of the pile in inches. The second number is the weight of the pile in pounds per foot. Also, when inspecting the piles, compare the heat number on the CS4171 material certification and the stamp on the piles. The information should match. This heat number will also need to be documented on the CS1005 form. When the pile driving hammer is on site, check to make sure it is the same hammer model as the hammer approval letter states. You will want to look for the pile hammer manufacturer and model number. Another important thing to inspect is the hammer cushion if accessible. The hammer cushion should match the material and thickness as stated on the hammer approval letter. The hammer cushion must be in good working condition. A simple check on the leads is to verify that the lengths of the leads are long enough for the hammer and piles to be driven. This length should be compared to the length on the hammer approval letter. Before driving each pile, verify the proper amount of measurement markings have been placed on the pile. The measurements are at each inch with references at one foot intervals. The amount of markings can be estimated from the core borings and the estimated pile tips. Bearing piles can be more closely estimated after the test piles are complete. It is important to confirm that the footing foundation is excavated to the depth on the plans before driving piles. Once all of the piles are in place, it is very difficult to add or remove any material. The correct starting elevation is especially critical in the battered piles, which are piles driven at an angle. This example shows an under-excavated foundation. If the pile is started into the ground at the plan layout location and driven at the plan batter, once the pile driving is complete, you can see that the pile at the plan footer elevation will fall outside of the footer. Simply removing material to the proper footer elevation and cutting off the pile will not solve the problem. Now, let's look at a foundation excavated to the proper depth. If the pile is started into the ground at the same plan layout location and driven at the plan batter, once the pile driving is complete, it will fall at the proper location as intended. Now that excavation to proper depths is complete, we are ready to begin piling operations. If pre-drilling is required, ensure that the drilling was performed to the proper depth and backfilled as per plan. Once the contractor has everything in place, schedule a date to begin the test pile installation with the structure control engineer. The structure control engineer needs to be on site for the test piles to review the pile driving analysis and set the driving criteria for the bearing piles. The pile driving operation consists of test piles and bearing piles. The test piles are the first piles to be driven. These piles will be connected to a pile driving analyzer that will help determine the driving criteria to get the piles to the required capacity. The bearing piles will be driven based off the driving criteria set by the test piles. For pile driving operations, personal protective equipment should include hard hat, ear protection, eye protection, and old clothing as recommended. The diesel hammer can be very loud, and once the diesel hammer warms up, oil will be spraying off the hammer onto everyone underneath. Verify in the field the location and orientation of the test piles compared to that of the plan. It can be helpful to have a numbering diagram for piles to keep inspection and documentation consistent. H-piles have a weak and a strong axis, 
so it is critical that the pile orientation matches that of the plan. For example, on an integral abutment, the piles are placed in the weak orientation to allow for the movement requirements of the abutment, versus this pier footing where the piles are placed in the strong orientation. Multiple copies of the CS1005 form should be on hand for each test pile planned for the day. The forms can be pre-populated to save time in the field. Extreme caution should be taken when the hammer is being started. It will take a couple of blows before the hammer has enough resistance to keep running. These first couple of drops, the pile can move a great distance and possibly move in an unintended direction. You must have an escape plan in place during the pile driving operation, especially during the starting of the hammer. Pick a location close enough to see the markings on the pile, but far enough away that if the pile shifts or something comes loose from the leads, you are not in its path. As the pile is driven into the ground, you will need a reference mark somewhere on the ground or on the leads that you can count the number of blows per foot or inch from. This can be as simple as a block of wood. Even though the test piles are being monitored by the sensors on the pile, the sensors cannot read pile movement, so the blow counts are still needed. This is a pile driving analyzer, also referred to as a PDA. The system works using two strain gauges and two accelerometers, and bolts on opposite sides of the pile. The system reads data from these sensors to determine the stresses in the top and bottom of the pile the approximate pile capacity, the stroke of the hammer, as well as several other points of data. The structure control engineer and the subcontractor performing the pile driving analysis will review the data provided as the pile is driven and determine when it reaches its capacity. As stated before, the PDA does not measure the length of pile driven, so during the driving operation, the structure control engineer will be asking how far the pile has been driven into the ground to compare to the information on the PDA. Now that the test piles are complete, your structure control engineer will provide you with the criteria on how to drive the bearing piles. The criteria will be a certain number of blows per inch and a minimum depth. Note that strange things can happen during driving. If you notice the bearing piles stop short, Go farther than the test piles or the pile movement slows down and then begins to move faster. This could be a sign of damage, as shown here. Take note of where this happens and contact your structure control engineer. During installation of the bearing piles, you will document the blow counts and hammer stroke on the CS1005 form. This can be done with the help of a saximeter. The saximeter is a piece of equipment that you can load specific data into such as the hammer type and pile length, and it will help track the counting of blows and stroke of the hammer by sound waves. Some saximeters can be downloaded to a computer program and compared to the CS1005 for the tracking of blow counts. It is important to ensure that the piles are being driven at the stroke length indicated on the pile hammer approval. If they are not at the minimum stroke length at absolute refusal, it could be a false indicator of absolute refusal. On the other hand, if the maximum stroke length is exceeded, unneeded stresses are induced into the pile and could damage the pile. Make sure to review your contract and special provisions to see if a restrike on the test piles is required. If a restrike is required, there is usually a three or five day wait from the time of initially driving the test pile. The structure control engineer should be scheduled to be on site. The restrike will consist of hooking the pile driving analysis equipment back to the test pile and begin driving the pile again. This is done to see if the pile capacity has changed. Depending on results, the structure control engineer may set a new driving criteria for the bearing piles to be driven to and may require another restrike. In some circumstances, splicing of the piles is needed to add additional length to a pile. Details on splicing can be found in Bridge Construction Standard BC757M. A welding procedure is required, along with PennDOT Form TR52 and an AWS D1.5 certified welder for H-piles. Note other types of piles could require different forms or welder certification types. 
Before cutting off the extra pile lengths, make sure they are checked and marked by the surveyor. Once they are cut off, it could be very costly if the elevation is not correct and more pile length is needed. Like the saying goes, measure two times and cut once. Once all pile driving is complete, it is time to make payment for the work. Refer to Publication 408, Section 1005.4 for the measurement and payment criteria, and also any special provisions that may apply to the piles. The test piles are a lump sum item and includes all applicable mobilization of equipment, the pile itself, pile tip reinforcement, and splicing to the indicated test pile length. It is rarely encountered, but refer to Section 1005.4a for any circumstances where additional payment is needed beyond the lump sum amount. To make payment for the bearing piles, they must meet the driven criteria set in Section 1005.3b.3. The piles will be rejected if they exceed this criteria based on the structure they are being installed for. If the bearing piles meet all criteria, their payment is based on the linear foot from the base of the pile to the indicated cutoff elevation. If the tip reinforcement is paid for separately, the length of the bearing pile will exclude the length of the tip. This linear foot unit price includes costs of furnishing and driving, cutting off, splicing, and rebuilding. Refer to Section 1005.4b for payment specifics. If a separate pay item is provided for the tip reinforcement, they are paid as an each item. Any pile driving analysis with a contract item will typically be paid as an each item, and the quantity will match the number of test piles. Be sure to check your contract items for payment methods. Some final points to remember. 1. Be familiar with the proper paperwork. 2. Review the plans, specifications, and contract documents. 3. Inspect materials and equipment prior to use. 4. Check foundation depth before driving piles. 5. Maintain communication with the structure control engineer. And 6. Ensure piles are driven to driving criteria and meet final tolerances. By following these steps and working safely, you will greatly increase your chance for a successful pile installation on your project.